I think there's a law of the universe that says that when you wear the whitest piece of clothing you own, there must serve Italian food, <laughs> especially a red sauce or some nature, because we all know what a pain it is to try to get that out in the wash, right? And this imagery of our sins being like scarlet, I mean, there's no, there's no confusing what the prophet would say. It's like blood. It's like when we commit sin, it's like blood staining our souls. It's present, and it's such a harsh reality. But if in these days it's hard to get blood out of clothing, could you imagine in those days mm -hmm. what they had to try and do? But this idea that God's grace and mercy could make something white again if nothing had ever touched it must have been extraordinary to hear. And this reading during the season of Lent, it causes us to think about ultimately what all of our choices end up doing to us and those around us, and calls us up front. Can we make a sense of, of repentance for those things and look upon God's mercy? And from that gift of mercy to see our lives as an opportunity to bring that grace to others. And that's what Jesus was trying to convey to his disciples. Uh, that in their ministry, it's not to exalt themselves, it's to continue to hand on the grace that was shown to them. And that is why it's important to really focus on lifting those burdens of helping the orphan and the widow, as we heard in the first reading. And all connected with that psalm phrase, to the upright I will show the saving power of God. And we only stand upright because God is lifting us up. He's helping restore our balance and our strength, our ability to move forward. And having this uh, fall in the celebration of St. Catherine Drexel is really quite beautiful because we see in the life of this woman someone who tried to reverse some of the tragedies that had befallen the people who had been living in this country by showing the mercy of God and lifting them up as she had been lifted up through her religious life. And I know most of the time when we talk about the third edition of the Roman Missal, most people are complaining to me, but today, today they got it right. The collect for St. Catherine Drexel was just extraordinarily beautiful. I mean, this is wonderful. You called St. Catherine Drexel to teach the message of the gospel and to bring the life of the Eucharist to the Native American and African American peoples. The, the treatment that these peoples had received in this country have stained us like scarlet. And her ministry was an effort to reverse that, to remind us what we're called to be and called to do. By her prayers and example enable us to work for justice among the poor and the oppressed and keep us undivided in love in the Eucharistic community of your church. Wow. When we were studying in seminary, Father Ed and I, under the tutelage of Dr. Paul Ford, there are two times during the Eucharistic prayer when the priest calls down the Holy Spirit. The first time is to make the bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus. The second time is to make all the members of the assembly into the body of Christ. And he said the second calling down of the Holy Spirit was the more miraculous event. <laughs> because it, it requires God's grace to draw us together and make us undivided in love. And the Eucharistic prayer that we're going to be hearing today will be the first Eucharistic prayer for reconciliation. And it'll speak about God's work of removing obstacles to unity, keeping people from being together, changing their hearts. Ultimately, the Eucharist is meant to change our hearts, to carry the Word of God to those who are poor and oppressed, so that through those ministries of grace, what had been painted scarlet, may now become dazzlingly white, may be transformed by God's grace into a beacon of hope. That is our Lenten journey. May we have the courage to walk it. <laughs>